Hi, I'm Tasha from One Big Happy Life on behalf of The Financial Diet, and this is The Lifestyle Fix brought to you by Skillshare. Spring is right around the corner, which means that home buying season is about to be in full force. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some essential items that you need to have as a new homeowner. When people think about the costs of purchasing their home, they typically tend to focus on obvious expenses like the down payment and the closing costs. They might even also think about setting aside funds for new furniture or blocks. Lines. That stuff is the fun stuff. But there are a whole host of other things that new homeowners often find themselves needing that might never even have occurred to them when they were setting up their finances for their new home. According to a study from the National Association of Home Builders, New homeowners spend an average of $10,000 on furniture, appliances, and home repairs in the first year. If you're not planning for those expenses, you can quickly end up piling on the credit card debt. I bought my first house when I was 19 years old, and since that time, I've gone back and forth between renting and buying as I've moved around the country. Over the years, these are the items that I've found myself consistently needing with every home purchase. Now, of course, every item on this list won't apply to every new homeowner situation. So just use it as a starting point to help you make your own list so that these purchases don't take your wallet by surprise right after you've made what's probably the biggest purchase of your life. Number one, a toolbox. A toolbox helps corral all of the other smaller tools that I'm gonna be mentioning on this list. Having a place to put all of your new homeowner house care stuff makes it easy for you to find what you need when you need it. It also makes your tools easier to carry around to various projects so that you don't have to keep walking back and forth to the basement or garage because you forgot something. And of course it makes it easier to tidy up afterwards because all of your tools already have a place where they belong. Number two, a hammer. Hammers are useful for more than just hanging up pictures. They come in handy for assembling furniture, pulling out rusty nails out of a pile of wood that the old homeowners left behind. There are many different types of hammers, but typically you'll wanna get a standard claw hammer, which has a claw on one side and a flat round part on the other side. Depending on what kind of work you expect to be doing in your house, you might eventually get a sledgehammer, which is a bigger, heavier hammer that's used for heavy duty demolition projects. We do a lot of DIY projects in our house, so we currently have six different types of hammers hanging out in our garage. A claw hammer, a sledgehammer, a ball peen hammer, a dead blow hammer, and a framing hammer. Number three, screwdrivers. You'll need screwdrivers for all kinds of things, like assembling furniture, opening the battery compartment of kids' toys, and tightening loose door hinges. For the sake of space, I recommend getting a screwdriver set with interchangeable bits and having magnetic heads, a nice bonus that makes them much easier to use. The two most common screw head types are Phillips head, which look like a plus sign, and flat heads, which look like a minus sign. But I've also come across hex, square, and star head screws. So having one screwdriver base with multiple heads, make sure that you're ready for a wide variety of situations. Number four, adjustable wrench. An adjustable wrench is a wrench that has jaws that can be resized to handle different sized nuts or bolts. A small and medium sized adjustable wrench can replace a whole set of wrenches and take up so much less space. Number five, drill and drill bits. Drills serve two main purposes. First, they bore holes in things, and secondly, they drive screws. There's some overlap there with screwdrivers, but they can handle the same job a lot faster. I recommend getting a cordless drill because then you don't have to worry about dragging an extension cord around with you everywhere. You'll also want two sets of drill bits, one with different diameter bits for drilling and the other that can drive screw heads that have different shapes and sizes. So Phillips, flathead, star, hex, and square. Number six. A level. A level is a long block shaped tool that helps make sure that you're installing things in a straight line. It's really useful when you're hanging up pictures in a row or towel bars. Anything where the final product being straight is important. If you want to get high tech and a bit pricier, you can actually buy a laser level that projects a straight line on the surface for you. I've never had one of those, but I do stare longingly at them when I'm at the hardware store. Number seven, wall anchors. Wall anchors are used for hanging heavy objects on walls. Most walls are drywall or plaster and aren't made to withstand the weight of heavy objects on a single point, which is what happens when you put a screw in a wall. So instead of just putting the screw directly in the wall, you drill a small hole in the wall, hammer in a wall anchor, then screw the screw into the anchor. As you tighten the screw, the anchor expands and grips the drywall to add stability. Heavy duty anchors even have prongs on the back that'll spread out and distribute the weight on the back end of the wall. 
wall. Using the right anchors for the job will keep your towel bars and framed artwork on your walls for years to come. Number eight, picture hangers. If you're only hanging lightweight pictures, then picture hangers are a great option. They typically involve hammering a single nail plus a metal brace with a hook on the end that you use to hang things from. The calendar that you see behind me is actually hung using picture hangers and a level. I used picture hangers where possible instead of screws and anchors because they do less damage to the wall. Number nine, picture hanging wire. Smaller pieces of artwork or picture frames only have a single hanging point, so one screw or picture hanger is all you need. But when you start getting into larger prints and photos, you'll see that they have two points on the back. Now, you can try to nail two picture hangers into the wall at exactly the right spot, so good luck with that. Or you can get yourself some picture hanging wire to string between the two hangers on the back, and then you just hook the wire onto a single picture hanger. Number 10, measuring tape. A measuring tape is one of those basic tools that any adult needs to have regardless of whether you're a homeowner or a renter. Your measuring tape is the key to making sure that the sofa you're eyeing will actually fit through your door and whether you'll need a gallon of paint or two in order to paint your living room. Number 11, plunger. The days of calling a landlord to fix a backed up drain are gone, my friend. You can call a plumber if you want to, but I guarantee you that it's going to get expensive really fast. Knowing how to unclog your own drain is an essential homeowner skill that's better to learn sooner rather than later. So get the a plunger so you'll be prepared to clear that drain. Also, know where the water shutoff valve is for all of your toilets and sinks, and know where to go to shut off the water for your whole house. That was a bonus, you're welcome. Number 12, lawn mower. If you have grass, it will need to be cut. You might be able to borrow one from a neighbor or your friends, but after a while, you will have to cough up the money for a lawn mower. Depending on the size of your yard, you might opt for a cheaper push mower, or you might have some acreage and have to cough up thousands for a riding mower. Typically though, you're probably looking at a few hundred dollars for a good self-propelled mower. Number 13, weed whacker. Weed whackers, AKA edge trimmers, are used to cut grass and plants where lawn mowers can't reach. You can also use them to edge your lawn around driveways and sidewalks, to make everything look neater. Number 14, a rake. If you have a yard, then you will have leaves and potentially grass clippings to deal with. Though generally, it's a good idea to leave your grass clippings in your grass. Rakes are the tool for that particular job. You can also spring for a leaf blower if you aren't into heavy duty yard work, but that's gonna cost you. Number 15, a compost bin. Again, assuming you have a yard, a compost bin is a great green addition to help you reduce the waste that you send to the landfill. Not to mention that having your own high quality compost to use in your yard will save you lots of money in the long run. Now, the prices of these can vary quite a bit, especially if you get the kind that has an exterior handle that turns itself, but ours cost less than $30 each and we have three of them. We keep a small container in our kitchen counter for compost and we dump it out in the bin every day. Number 16, garden hose and hose attachment. Even if you don't have a yard or if you refuse to water it, you'll find a need to use water outside of your house. You might decide to grow a vegetable garden or keep chickens and will want to give them water so they can stay alive. Or you might need to wash your car or even just wash the outside of your house, which is something that you'll want to do about once a year. Number 17, a sprinkler. If you have a yard or garden that needs water to keep looking its best and you don't enjoy standing outside and watering your plants by hand, you'll want to invest in a sprinkler to do the work for you. Of course, you might be lucky enough to have bought a house with a sprinkler system already installed. In that case, you'll just want to make sure that your system is programmed to be as efficient as possible and that it gets regular maintenance because it can be pretty pricey to fix. Number 18, a bucket. This comes in handy more than you might think. A bucket has multiple purposes, both inside and outside. All you have to do is change how you style it. You can have a tool bucket instead of a toolbox. It could be a cleaning caddy or a car wash bucket or catch water leaks or use to mop up the floor or even mix concrete. You can go ahead and make a list of all of the things that you can do with your bucket and call it your bucket list. Number 19, shovels. There are many different types of shovels, but typically you'll wanna have three kinds on hand. A snow shovel, if you live in a place that actually experiences winter, a long-handed digging shovel for moving dirt and mulch and sand for your kid's sand pit and all that kind of stuff. And you'll also want a hand shovel for planting flowers or vegetables. Number 20, 
Stud Finder. Yes, I'm talking about the tool that finds the wooden wall studs and not the mythical device that helps you find a partner that looks like this. It will come in handy anytime you want to hang anything on the wall, heavy or not. Knowing what's behind the wall will determine whether you need a drywall anchor or an empty wall or a screw when a stud is behind the wall. Frequently, things that you want to mount to the wall that will hold weight will need to be anchored into a stud to make sure it doesn't fall. Number 21, voltage tester. This tool is used to find out if electricity is running to an electric box. It can be as simple as two wires with a light bulb in between, or it can look like a large pen that will beep and light up if there's a live wire. It gives you peace of mind when you're tackling small electrical projects, because getting shocked is not fun. The first line of instruction when it comes to replacing any light, fan, or switch is to turn off the electricity, but that's easier said than done, because breakers aren't always labeled correctly and electrical boxes can contain more than one circuit. Save yourself some time, worry, and pain by getting one of these and checking to make sure that the power is off before you replace that Hello Kitty chandelier that the previous owners left behind. Now that I've shared some essential tools for new homeowners, Let's talk about a great place to learn some new things, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on essential topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Looking to brush up your lifestyle photography skills so you can deck out those empty walls in your house? Check out Mart Marie Forsberg's class, Lifestyle Photography, Capturing Inspiring visual stories, where she teaches you how to capture stunning stories in a styled yet natural way. Click the link in the description box to join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today and take advantage of a special offer just for TFD viewers. The first 500 visitors will get two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. Act now so you don't miss out and start learning today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and tune in here every single Friday for new episodes of The Lifestyle Fix. See you next week.